Dr. James Davis. I'm a consulting psychiatrist at the University of Iowa Hospitals and Clinics in Iowa City, Iowa. And this is a, a, another geezer video. It's the Dirty Dozen on Factitious Disorder and Malingering. And it goes with uh, a blog post on practical psychosomaticists at uh, URL jajsamos.wordpress.com. And uh, I've done a couple of these, and uh, I, uh, I like doing them because they're short and pithy and uh, they uh, get the general idea across uh, relatively quickly. Uh, I have um, copies of the slides here that I'm going to go through uh, so as I can uh, stay on track. And um, you can follow along. Uh, if you're seeing this on YouTube, you can go to the Practical Psychosomaticist uh, and see the video there and uh, see the slides and annotations. Uh, there's also a short quiz. Uh, we'll start with slide three. And uh, it's a uh, slide about the diagnosis uh, per the Diagnostic and Statistical Manual. And uh, the diagnosis of factitious disorder is uh, intentional production or a feigning of physical or psychological signs or symptoms. So this can be uh, a disorder in which depression, alcoholism, schizophrenia, and bipolar disorder are all lied about and fake. Uh, physical uh, problems uh, are limited uh, only by the imagination of the patient and have uh, run the gamut from uh, infections, fevers, and uh, uh, other types of medical problems that um, can be manufactured. Uh, now the patients deliberately produce these symptoms or lie about them. Uh, the motivation for the behavior is uh, then uh, presumed to be to assume uh, the patient role. Uh, and also external incentives for the, uh, for the behavior, such as economic gain, avoiding legal responsibility, or improving physical well-being are all absent. Uh, malingering is more of an accusation than a psychiatric disorder. In fact, it's not a psychiatric disorder per the DSM. Uh, it is the deliberate um, production of feigned illness, but it's motivated by external incentives, which differentiates it from factitious disorder. And usually the incentives are things like entitlements or evading criminal prosecution uh, or avoiding military service, things like that. Uh, you should uh, suspect malingering when there are obvious external incentives, uh, concurrent antisocial personality disorder, or marked discrepancy between claimed symptoms and objective findings. Uh, there's usually poor cooperation with evaluation and treatment. And slide four is uh, about historical notes and uh, Munchausen syndrome as a term was first coined by Dr. Richard Asher and published in the 1951 issue of The Lancet and it described a severe form of factitious disorder uh, and we still call the most uh, severe form of factitious disorder Munchausen's syndrome today and it occurs in about 10 percent of uh, this group of patients and uh, the patient adopts this role sort of as a career. Uh, the first published uh, Iowa case report of Munchausen syndrome uh, was in 1957 in the Journal of American Medical Association by Dr. John Chapman and uh, the title of it was Peregrinating Problem Patients Munchausen Syndrome and it was about a particular individual known as the Indiana Cyclone. The Indiana Cyclone was also immortalized in a poem uh, called the Munchausen Saga written by another Iowa uh, physician named Dr. William Bean and uh, he was uh, head of the Department of Internal Medicine here uh, decades ago. And I just would like to read to you a, uh, uh, the first stanza of the poem, The Munchausen Saga, by Dr. Bean. Uh, the Munchausen Saga starts this way. In the summer of 1954, at Iowa City, to our hospital door, Mecca, for hundreds every day, a merchant seaman found his way, a part-time wrestler in denim jacket. He crashed through the door with a horrible racket, 260 pounds at least, and covered with blood like a wounded beast. The Indiana Cyclone was a real person, and uh, the, uh, the poem goes on for many pages about his colorful exploits, most of which were lies. And uh, he underwent excruciating painful procedures, which most malingerers uh, would usually avoid. Now, this uh, selection of the, the stanza of uh, or the first stanza of the Munchausen Saga is taken from my chapter uh, called Managing Factitious Disorder and Malingering in uh, the book uh, co-edited by Dr. Bob Robinson and myself 
the title is Psychosomatic Medicine, an Introduction to Consultation of Liaison Psychiatry, and uh, it uh, looks like that. Might as well plug my book, uh, since this is my video. Uh, in 1994, the factitious disorder by proxy was introduced into the dsm form and is defined as the deliberate production or feigning of physical or psychological signs or symptoms in another person who is under the individual's care. And children, unfortunately, are often the victims. The, uh, the diagnosis is not applied to the victim, but to the perpetrator. A quick literature review uh, uh, turns out that uh, there's really no evidence-based literature in terms of control trials about factitious disorder. Uh, although there were about 1,900 papers published from 1985 to the present, uh, most of those are case reports. Uh, there are two meta-analyses, eight reviews, and many case reports, of course, as already mentioned. The comments on the reviews that uh, are probably useful are that early detection uh, will likely prevent chronic illnesses. Uh, a therapeutic approach is emphasized with psychiatrists and primary care physicians collaborating. Uh, and the, the uh, primary care physician should strive to adopt a conservative medical management approach in order to avoid causing further harm to the patient. Um, the development of a therapeutic alliance is essential for treatment. And of course, we'd all agree about that, but it's very uh, difficult to establish a therapeutic alliance when the patient uh, uh, has, has uh, no trust um, in the medical profession, yet uh, perseveres. At, uh, at trying to fool the medical profession. Uh, demographics uh, tend to show that overwhelmingly patients are young, educated, white female healthcare workers. And um, fortunately, a systematic review of treatment uh, thus far found no robust evidence supporting any management strategy, which is not to imply that there's no hope. Uh, what we probably need to focus on is demonstrating to this patient population that we would like to establish a a trusting therapeutic relationship so that we can help them stop hurting themselves. Factitious disorder with physical symptoms, a retrospective examination, is uh, a paper uh, written by Lois Cron and others and published in 2003 in uh, the American Journal of Psychiatry. And after a 21 year review of 93 patients, uh, the mean age of this group was about 31, 72% were female, 90% Caucasian. Uh, almost 70% were employed, 20% left the hospital against medical advice, uh, but approximately 20% agreed to psychiatric treatment, which is a sign of hope. Uh, a very interesting uh, uh, idea is factitious Munchausen syndrome, which was the subject of a case report uh, published in 1980 in the New England Journal of Medicine. And it was a report uh, fire, um, uh, written by uh, emergency room resident physicians uh, about a man named Norman U. Sinchbaum. Uh, Norman is uh, spelled N-O-R-M-A-N. U is the middle initial. Sinchbaum is S-E-N-C-H-B-A-U. And of course, this is an anagram for Baron Munchausen. And the whole case report is a sham. It's a hoax. In fact, it's a lie. Uh, now it's impossible to publish such case reports in the New England Journal, uh, New England Journal of Medicine, or any other peer-reviewed journal uh, of this nature. Uh, but uh, it, it, the uh, the interesting points about the case report uh, really got at the, the uh, paradox that factitious disorder encompasses. So the patient uh, who is fictitious actually lied about having visited many hospitals and habitually mimicked medical conditions and demanded immediate hospitalization for treatment of his Munchausen syndrome. He lied about having uh, many surgeries and uh, displayed a gridiron abdomen, gridiron means many uh, surgical scars, washed off with soap and water. Uh, he lied about being treated with chemotherapy for cancer and electroconvulsive therapy for depression. He called the many hospitals he listed and nobody had ever heard of him. And he left against medical advice when he was confronted with his inconsistencies. Now, of course, the whole story was made up uh, but many uh, um, uh, authors actually cited this uh, case report and uh, reports afterward. Um, and uh, the uh, authors uh, left a clue. I mean, they did identify the patient uh, more or less as uh, Baron Munchausen, if you could figure out the anagram. 
but Mark Feldman, a, uh, a nationally recognized expert, and in fact, Tissue Disorder actually wrote a paper exposing this hoax, and the two um, authors of the paper uh, later admitted it. Uh, factitious disorder in the 21st century is slide 8, and it's about the increasing availability of computer-based medical records, and the hope that it will facilitate communication between institutions and may help early recognition uh, and diagnosis of uh, this group of patients. And uh, it, it's also hoped that uh, uh, this will foster the understanding that this is an illness that often starts in childhood, uh, and uh, that early intervention and detection can prevent chronicity of the illness. Uh, slide 9 is uh, about factitious disorder on the internet. More, team, more than 14 cases have been described, and the, the terms vi virtual factitious disorder and Munchausen by internet have been coined by Mark Feldman, uh, identified earlier as an expert on factitious disorder. Uh, people who uh, uh, engage in this tend to jump from one support, online support group to another and identify themselves as the patient, son, or mother of uh, uh, somebody with factitious disorder to make the story seem even more convincing. Uh, conclusions and New Directions uh, is slide 10, and at uh, a 2007 annual psychosomatic medicine meeting, uh, Dr. Lois Cron and others proposed that the DSM-5 place factitious disorder within the somatoform disorder character uh, category. Uh, and, you know, uh, uh, in a term, somatoform disorder with factitious behavior. Uh, they also agreed with continuing to use lying, as well as self-production of illness or self-harm, as diagnostic criteria. There's also a proposal to consider placing uh, factitious disorder in the category of a, uh, access to personality disorders, because they tend to be intractable, inflexible, enduring, pervasive, maladaptive behaviors. Uh, that uh, deviate markedly from cultural expectations. They're stable over time. Uh, they lead to a lot of subjective distress and functional role impairment, and they begin in early adulthood. Management guidelines exist, uh, and uh, they're common sense uh, and uh, practical. Uh, the, uh, the best goal is to stick to interventions that are indicated by objective signs rather than the subjective report of the patient. Uh, it tends to lie to doctors. Uh, setting compassionate but firm limits on requested interventions is also wise uh, to avoid further harm. And team members should communicate with each other in order to avoid splitting. Uh, slide 12, of course, is a list of references, which is more extensive on uh, the uh, blog site within the post. And uh, I hope this has been helpful and uh, that you'll have some comments or questions for me about it. I uh, really thank you for listening. And uh, I uh, welcome you to the Practical Psychosomaticist. And this is yet another dirty dozen. Uh, I will look at the time. I have to go to work.